London is a fantastic place for a vacation with its grand history and entertainment venues. Far too many curiosities to enumerate here. It also has a number of museums with artistic masterpieces of immeasurable value. One artist who doesn't fail to catch your eye is Leonardo da Vinci, Renaissance painter of the Mona Lisa and religious-themed works such as The Last Supper and Virgin of the Rocks. As you can tell, I'm not a Londoner. I've spent most of my life in Charlottesville, home to the University of Virginia. I studied art history there because of my lifelong interest in art. Ever since I was a young child, I've loved drawing. While I'm no Leonardo in my drawing abilities, maybe there's still hope for my art career. For now, I'm quite happy with my current job in the IT field. If not for that experience, I would never have learned about a co-worker's singular encounter with the Ginevra da Vinci, one of Leonardo's paintings in nearby Washington, D.C. In fact, it's the only painting of the Renaissance artist kept in a permanent collection here in the Western Hemisphere. My name is Pat Quadros, and I invite you to watch my ensuing interview with Tony Engel Goncharov about what it was like to work at the National Gallery of Art. By the end of the interview, I hope you'll agree with one of my conclusions. Traverse the world all you want, but there are plenty of fascinating stories close to home. So welcome to the in-studio portion. Uh, we're going to do an interview today, and I'm very excited um, to share this story with you. Uh, my name is Pat Quadros. I work for the University of Virginia in the IT field, and this is my friend and co-worker. My name is Tony Engel Gontroff. And um, the way that we met was I liked a blog, and I had written an article about Leonardo da Vinci and she, you had seen it, correct? Right. Yeah. And um, what was fascinating uh, mm -hmm. was that you had also uh, gone to the gallery and seen the painting. But in, I think yeah. in a, a far different way than most of us get to encounter Leonardo da Vinci. So um, 2015 is a very big year for Leonardo, I would say. Um, just a bit of background. Uh, the Renaissance artist, he was born in 1452, April 15th, actually tax day for us Americans. <laughs> um, so it's coming up close. And I think to sort of commemorate his birthday, I think it'd be great if we had a discussion about his art. Um, so there's lots of different exhibitions going on. There's the one in Williamsburg right now through April 12th. And that's on Leonardo and the power of observation. No, excuse me. Uh, it's Leonardo and the Idea of Beauty, the one in Williamsburg. Um, the other one that's going on is the one in Phoenix, and that one is on the power of observation. It's on the Lester Codex, which is actually the only codex here in America. Oh. Um, a lot of a codex, uh, it's mostly referring to his journals. In addition to some of the paintings you're all familiar with, he did um, scientific studies in his journals lots of drawings, lots of notes. Um, so that's what I'm referring to when I say codex. Um, the William and Mary one, if you missed that here in Virginia, you can also see it April 15th um, until June in Boston. So if you're closer to Virginia, make sure you go there first. But if you want to celebrate his birthday, maybe go to the one in Boston on the 15th. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there's also a documentary Inside the Mind of Leonardo that just came out in theaters last year. Uh, it was in 3D in some theaters. Oh, wow. And others, it was in regular 2D. Um, but circling back, we're going to talk more about the National Gallery and the permanent collections. So the ones I spoke of earlier were the temporary exhibitions, mm -hmm. only around for a limited time. And the uh, one in the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., that was purchased in 1967 um, by the daughter of Andrew Mellon, who founded the 
gallery during the administration of FDR, and it was dedicated in 1941. So the painting we're going to talk about today is the Ginevra da Vinci. It was done in the 1470s when Leonardo was only in his early 20s. Mm -hmm. It's an oil on panel, and um, it was done during the time that he was in Florence. And Ginevra, I believe, is the daughter of a banker in Florence. And it may have been done for the occasion of her engagement. Uh, there's some debate about that. Uh, it's not thought to be a wedding portrait because usually the wife is facing uh, the husband. The panels are together, husband on one side, wife on the other side. So um, thank you so much for joining me today, Tony. Well, thank you for inviting me. Sure. Uh, so when did you work for the National Gallery? Um, I, I was... Uh, I had started my um, uh, four years um, studying at the Art School of the Art Institute in Chicago, and it was my first summer home after my first year, and that was in 1968. And uh, so summer. I had gone back home to Maryland, which is where my parents were, and uh, I was looking for a summer job. Mm. And and they picked you. Well, what happened was, uh, I think, it's a little while ago, but I think my mother or my dad had uh, had a friend who somehow somehow found out about this job. These um, they were looking for guards mm -hmm. at the National Gallery. For, it was a summertime job. It was only like, you know, maybe four hours a day, but. Uh, so they want they just wanted uh guards over the summer so i said oh that sounds fantastic because Great. of course i loved hanging around at the museum and as it turned out um, i got to stand around as, as a guard <laughs> and look at a lot of great paintings right i remember you said there were a lot of students from the dental college. Right, so yeah. how did you get to guard, of all paintings, the Ginevra da Vinci? <laughs> yeah, most of my colleagues, my guard colleagues, were dental students. And so it was it was very interesting. I, I don't know how they, they, they must have, uh, word of mouth, they must have all uh, decided that, that that was a good job for them, too. And um, But they didn't seem as interested in art as I was. Mm -hmm. So um, I think somebody must have known that, that I was interested in art, and they said, would you like to um, guard this Leonardo painting? And um, it's just been um, acquired. And I said, sure. Right. It was only a year later because right. it, was, it was bought in 1967. Yeah. So that must have been a very exciting time. Yeah. It was, it was as I recall, it was in a, a room all by itself. So I, I just, and of course, as guards, we had to stand. That was the only thing that was, um, in retrospect, that was the only thing that, for some reason, I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that I would be standing for all those hours. But after a while, I thought that was pretty neat mm -hmm. because that kept me on my toes. And um, the, the other thing that I thought was sort of amusing was that, um, they gave me a whistle. Right, and you brought one today. I <laughs> yeah, can see. Yeah, I brought it. It almost looked exactly like this. And um, I think it was because this was this new painting, because I didn't wear it. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't wear it if I was in the other wings, mm -hmm. where I would guard different times, you know, different days. And um, So what occasions would you have to blow the whistle? Well, I, I think it was only mainly for this Leonardo painting because it was new and it was a very uh, valuable, I mean, not that the other paintings weren't valuable too, but I think they were being extra cautious. And uh, So if someone tried to touch it or yeah, if someone was being disruptive, right. you would blow the whistle? Yeah, I think that was probably the intention. Okay, that's really neat. I haven't <laughs> seen any guards with whistles these days. Usually it's the no, alarm. No, I haven't either. <laughs> Usually it's the alarm system when right. you're getting too close and it says, right. please step away from the painting. Right. Which yeah. did happen to me on one occasion, even oh. though I wasn't touching the painting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. It's, so yeah. um, having served as a guard at the museum, mm -hmm. do you have a different view of the job 
you know, when you go or when you visit museums? I yes, I definitely do. I and and I guess it was one of those things that you don't learn until you're actually in that situation or having that experience. And that is like most people are very respectful mm -hmm. of the art, but on occasion I would see people getting really, really close to a painting or something and and I felt like I, I didn't usually have to say anything, please don't touch them, but mm -hmm. at that time, of course, also they weren't under glass or anything. Most of it, I, I recall definitely in the Impressionist wing, the, um, nothing was under glass, but, and people would get very close. Right, uh, I, and, I uh, know that the so Mona Lisa and the Louvre, that's under glass and they have ropes, yeah. but from my understanding, even today yeah. you can walk fairly close right. to the Ginevra. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. there, there might be a few people milling around, but it's very right. easy to get your photograph of the, the yeah. painting or standing near the painting, which I think is a different yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've talked about this a little bit, that it's been a great experience at the time to be mm -hmm. in the museum, to even though you were standing all those hours. Mm -hmm. uh, you it's must okay. have had a lot of time to think about Leonardo's work. So yeah. kind of Talk about that, what it was like to be near it, sort of describe yeah. the painting and, and your thoughts about it. Uh, sure. Uh, as it turns out, I, I had read a book, um, I th I th I'm pretty sure I had already read it by the time I was in a guard there. It was, um, it's called The Romance of Leonardo da Vinci. And my, my dad recommended it to me because he was a, he was a great lover of Da Vinci's work and his art, and um, and it the book just opened opened up uh, the world, his world to me. Mm -hmm. It opened up. I mean, I just felt by reading it, it even though it is translated from the Russian, um, it's by Marischkovsky. Um, it, it it just puts you right there, it makes you feel like. You're right there with him, and it describes uh, his personality, his what he did, what he was interested in, which was just about everything, and his quirky um, little things like writing. He was a left left-handed, but he wrote everything in reverse, and yes, the mirror writing, the mirror writing, and I guess I don't know that they're really sure about his intention with that, but... Well, I, I, I get the sense that he's pulling a bit from Giorgio Vasari, a um, uh -huh. 16th century art historian. I think he dabbled a little bit in painting, but then he found his calling to be more in writing about art right. history. Um, and he's actually sort of a contemporary of Leonardo. He lived from 1511 to 1574. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this tradition of writing about artists trying to get you into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not getting all the, all the details correct, but getting that sense of um, what it was like to have that sort of life. So mm -hmm. I have a quote, too. I know you have a few. Uh, oh, and yeah. I found it of all places in London when uh, I went on vacation there and I saw some Leonardo um, paintings. The Virgin of the Rocks was one that I had seen from the 1490s mm -hmm. uh, in the National Gallery. And then along the uh, London tube they had, um, it was neat because they had paintings or reproductions of paintings in the subway. But they also had it, one of them, a quote from Vasari. It didn't say it was from Vasari, but I recognized it as <laughs> such. And the quote yeah. was, in this painting of Leonardo's, there was a smile so pleasing that it seemed divine rather than human. I know that one refers to the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The La Gioconda, the joyful one, is mm -hmm. also how it's known. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other ways they describe. I know you had a really great quote or a couple yeah. there. Feel free to share them right now. Okay, with yeah. Well, this one, uh, this quote I think sort of summarizes um, how Leonardo felt about art. And it's supposedly it was a quote of his, um, although this book is 
I think, um, historical fiction, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is, seems to me like it must be pretty accurate. He said, if thou would be an artist, forsake all sadness and care, save for thy art. Let thy soul be as a mirror, which reflects all objects, all movements and colors, remaining itself unmoved and clear. And then he was with, his, um, with a, um, an apprentice of his, and Beltrafio, and he, he was the one who um, quoted this, that Leonardo told him that. And he has a number of quotes of Leonardo's in here that I think pretty much summarized his, his outlook about art and life. And then it says, they entered the city gates of Florence. So it was, they were walking together. So you really feel like you're right there with him. Mm -hmm. and, it definitely and his, sounds uh, like a big apprentice. moment before they're heading into the city. Yeah. And um, I can't remember if I'd mentioned it already, but Leonardo was in Florence from 1466 until about 1480. From accounts, we know that he went to Milan in 1482. Uh, to work for Lido Lodovico Sforza and his military court. He was yeah. going to do a bronze horse, but unfortunately there was wartime, so all the bronze ended up being melted by that point for cannon. Oh. So we never got to see the final product of that, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I remember this other great quote that you had. Um, and I have yeah. it right here on another screen. Oh, okay. uh, so the best of musicians, singers, storytellers, and poets, the wittiest of conversationalists, did the artist invite to his studio that they might divert her, the subject of the painting, and obviate the en ennui, which is usual on the faces of sitters for portraits. So this is from the chapter about the Mona Lisa, right. but I could easily imagine yeah. this for the Ginevra da Benci, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you are sitting for a long time. They were sitting, whereas you were standing for many hours. <laughs> and um, so the artist would have to have, you know, a very interesting studio, and I, yeah. I guess, so that they could have uh, a pleasant expression for their painting, because that's right. going to be for eternity, or as long as that the paint lasts. <laughs> so. Um, how often do you go back to the National Gallery? I mean, we're, uh, we're in Virginia, so it's fairly close. Yeah. Uh, I try to go back as often as possible, but I must confess I haven't been there in a while. Uh, so my, my, uh, my mom used to live up there, but she moved down here, and so mm -hmm. I, my frequent trips weren't as frequent anymore to go up there so but it's always a great experience oh yeah you always go back Definitely. to look for it when you go yes well that's yeah. wonderful yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i can imagine or i can sense that it sort of had a big impact on the rest of your life um, mm -hmm. so you went to art school in chicago correct right yeah and then um so tell me a little bit about how that kind of impacted your life your career i mean we both work in it mm -hmm. it's not the same as art and a lot of people lately have been pushing for STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, and I can quote someone from Forbes magazine or uh, saying recently, the purpose behind STEM um, promotion is that individual careers and countries will prosper to the degree that they have STEM fluency is what they call it. So it's much better for people, society, um, if science, the sciences are um, sort of the focus in studies. I actually kind of disagree with that. Uh, I think the arts are important. I think you do too. I'd like yes. to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I definitely think that the arts are equally important, if not more so, uh, because they're, the arts are, are what allows us to use our creativity, our imaginations, and to, uh, to better society, to better ourselves, to, to observe life 
underst try to understand it and explore. And I think without the arts, whether it's the visual, the, the um, literary, or musical, um, I think, I'm think uh, or the dramatic arts, I think they're all really what, they're what makes life worthwhile to me. So I, and I feel that they are what help us as human beings to become more better people. Better people. We already knew each other in our department uh, pretty well, I think, got along pretty well. <laughs> but it was just so, you know, so much richer, I think, to our conversations once we both found out we had that artistic connection. Mm -hmm. Talk about the painting. It's an earlier painting in Leonardo's career, mm -hmm. 1470s versus the more well-known Mona Lisa, which was right. started around 1503 and worked mm -hmm. on periodically until his death in 1519, I believe. You, see, you don't see so much the chiascuro, the light and dark, that right. he's so well known for. So I think mm -hmm. people are very surprised when they see the Ginevra and they recognize it as a da Vinci. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's not using so much the sfumato or the kind of the gradual weighing down of paint so that mm -hmm. the layers are smoother in a way. It's not so much harsh lines as it seemed to define Italian painting before he arrived with some other uh, great Renaissance painters. So you can definitely see such a big shift. Um, mm -hmm. Did you get that sense looking at the painting? I mean, wh what, what do you think of the experience or why do you think he's captured the imagination of people so much with his paintings? I think um, what he did is, well, in that, with that painting in particular, um, I found myself looking at it and saying, like, I feel like I know this woman. It was almost like she, he, he brought her to life. And a lot of times, I think, doing that, his, his skill or his, his actual um, manipulation of the, of the medium wasn't even noticeable. All you noticed was her her presence almost. And so it was it's very captivating. It's very yeah. effortless. I think last effortless, time we talked yeah. about it, you said it was a very unassuming painting. Right. Unas definitely. You don't like at least for me looking at it, I didn't I didn't even notice any brush strokes. I didn't that wasn't not that I d don't I like a wide range of different styles and from abstraction to, or non-objective to mm -hmm. uh, impressionist. Well, that's, but, that's but very interesting because it, they, yeah. excuse me, I'm sorry. So they had a yeah. close up and I, I can't remember what technique they used, but you could actually see his thumbprint in there, so it oh. seems like he meticulously laid the paint on, yeah, uh, which is one advantage of using oils. Right. Um, but you know, you can look at a Leonardo and tell that it's a Leonardo versus mm -hmm. I showed you that one painting of the angel mm -hmm. from the 1490s mm -hmm. by one of his colleagues who, or someone who was working on yeah. a panel that was going to go with one of his altarpieces, mm -hmm. and this artist. I think his name was Francesco. Uh, you could tell that he's using some advice from Leonardo, and it looks sort of like it with the curls and the hair, mm -hmm. but you know, just looking at it, that it's not Leonardo right, da Vinci. Right. So. Yeah, he paints, and there was another quote which I, I, um, I was looking for again, and I couldn't find it, but basically, he said, in essence, that you you have to draw from your heart. You have to paint from your heart, and that's that comes across to me in his his work. He's totally like coming from a place of well, I guess passion and, and love for. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's interesting that you mention yeah. it. I think that was one of the um, uh, emphasis emphases in the documentary that came out last year from Julian Jones here in the States mm -hmm. was they wanted you to make Leonardo very accessible. Um, some people view him as sort of, I guess, a god <laughs> or in yeah. a way. But we know for a fact that he had failures. For mm -hmm. instance, the horse not getting sure. finished. Um, lots of paintings not being mm -hmm. finished, actually. Um, like that altarpiece. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, their tagline, I think, was they want you to see, they want you to become a disciple of experience because that is how Leonardo actually described himself at one point. Mm -hmm. So bringing experience and scientific studies, real life, rather than the ideal into his work. So uh, it's, it's so great that you've kind of yeah. uh, pulled that out of the painting. So I hope that uh, all of you got a lot out of our interview today. Uh, it was really exciting to bring this story to you and mm -hmm. to show our excitement about the arts as well. We want the arts to stay in the yes. curriculum. So STEM, STEAM, yes. excuse me, not STEM. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope that you will also check out all these wonderful exhibitions, mm -hmm. the one in Williamsburg, the one in Boston, if you missed the one in Williamsburg, and the one in Phoenix. So mm. I also forgot to mention probably that the Ginevra da Benci is the only Leonardo painting in the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a Leonardo, otherwise you have to go to Europe, uh, Italy, and <laughs> London, France to see all mm. these great works. So we hope you'll take advantage of all the wonderful art opportunities here in the States and Feel free to send me any feedback and questions um, if you'd yeah. like. So thank you again, Tony. And thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks.